Hi guys, let's go to our host and configure Nginx. And obviously to install new software you need to be root, so I already SSH to the server as root and uh, ready for action. To install Nginx you will first need to configure another repository. Nginx as a package, it will not be available in a standard repository for CentOS, so what you will need to do first is to install um, install minus y epel or apple. Apple is a package repository extra packages for enterprise Linux. These are the collection of additional non-standard packages and Nginx is counted as such as non-standard package. So EPEL or Apple release. I have no clue how to pronounce this properly. I even did a little research how to pronounce this thing. Are they calling it Apple or are they calling it EPL? Don't have a clue. Okay, just hit enter it, it will work in just one second. So it's installed. And now you will be able to get Nginx. And again, we're calling yum minus y to avoid questions. Install Nginx. Hit enter. And in a couple of seconds, it should also download Nginx. Well, it's a little bit slower than a couple of seconds, but it should be there. Great, so now Nginx is installed. Let's enable it, let's start it. And in order to start it, we will use a new command called systemctl. Systemctl is the command that works with systemd, a startup and service management system for CentOS. And we also will use systemctl a little bit later to make sure that Nginx is starting whenever our server starts up. Okay, so now let's go and do that systemctl start Nginx. Hit enter, nothing happened. Let's see if Nginx is working. System CDL status Nginx. Okay, so it's active and running and it looks green. So now let's go to our nanogram IO. Nanogram IO. And you see here, welcome page, welcome to Nginx on Fedora. This means that Nginx is installed and ready to work, but it's not showing up our website, our easy IO page. It shows the standard hello page for Nginx. So we'll configure it in just one second, but before we do that, let's make sure that Nginx will restart if our server restarts. To do that, we'll type system, CTL, enable. Enable means start whenever the server starts, Nginx. Okay, it's created the sim link. We will not test it and reboot the server right now, but trust me, it will restart Nginx whenever the system is rebooted. Okay, so now what we want to do is to get rid of Nginx hello page and instead of that hello page, point it to our Node.js application. And in order to do that, we will need to edit Nginx config files. So Nginx configs are stored here in Etsy, Nginx, and the main configuration, the entry point is Nginx conf. This config might look a little bit intimidating if you haven't worked with Nginx before, but it is a good time to start getting familiar with it, right? So we are mostly interested in this block, in the HTTP block. You have things like log format, access log, uh, etc. We don't really care about those parameters. Those are configured properly for us. The biggest and most interesting parts are the server blocks inside of Nginx configs and inside of server blocks, location blocks. That's where your configuration will go to. So Nginx can serve multiple servers, multiple host names, multiple domains on the same host. So all the servers, each server is describing one of those domains. And this one is a default server. So as you see, the default server has its root in the file system in this folder. So that's exactly where this page that we saw on the screen resides, right? So by default, Nginx will send it to all the users. But what we want to do instead of using the default server, we want to configure our own configuration for nanogram IO server, right? And we will not do that in this big general config. What we will do instead is we will create a separate config file and we will store it here. This is the location inside of Nginx configuration folder conf d, everything that ends with conf will be included before default server into the configuration. So if we add our server configuration into this file, into one of the files that ends with conf inside of this folder, it will be included in nginx config, right? So let's do that. Firstly, before I go there, I want to copy this block because this will be the block that I will need to configure. I'll just have it in my buffer. And now let's go out. Uh, let's just quit, we will not save anything. And let's go now to this folder, 
Etsy, Nginx, Conf. Oh, isn't it there? I don't see it. Okay, so let's create it then. So we'll create conf.d and inside of conf.d we will create a file called nanogram.io.conf. So this way Nginx should be able to include this file into the general configuration. Okay, so let's now edit this file. So let's go and start from inserting everything that we copied from the default server block. Okay, so this will be our server. What do we want to change here? Firstly, I think I want to change server name because this is how Nginx will resolve the, uh, the configuration, which config block to use for a given server, for a given host. So whenever user is typing in his browser nanogram dot io I want this server block to be executed. So now I need to remove this directive, this setting called default server. Why? Because there might be only one default server and it's already configured in our main config. So I don't need this. And I'm fine with the listen ports. Root tells where to take files from. I don't really care about root at this point. I might a little bit later. So I will just comment out this line. I don't want to serve any statics just yet. Okay, the next thing we don't want to include any additional configuration inside of uh, this block. I don't need them. Let's just delete this line and this line. And uh, yeah, it looks good so far. Now inside of this block inside of location slash means what to do whenever user asked for any file at all any address at all. What we want to do is forward all the traffic to our Node.js application. What we'll type here is proxy pass and then put the address of our running application. So it is on, don't forget the semicolon at the end, by the way. It is on HTTP local host 8080. Okay, now let's save this config and check if it will work. Before we restart and before we do anything with Nginx, let's test if Nginx is configured properly, right? Because if you restart and all of a sudden it turns out that you missed something in configuration and your Nginx is not starting, your server is in downtime during this time. So you don't want that to happen. You want to test beforehand. The command that we will run is Nginx minus T, stands for test. So let's test our config. The configuration file syntax is okay. Test is successful. Okay, so now it should be safe to restart Nginx. How do we restart Nginx? System, CDL, restart Nginx. So it restarts. Let's just check that restart was successful and type status. It should be successful because configs were okay and we were fine. Okay, so now the config is working fine. Let's check. And what? The page you're looking for is temporary unavailable. Please try again later. What does that mean? Okay, let's go back. We already know how do we diagnose the issues that might happen on the host. So we'll use netstat to list the open ports and see if all the applications are properly working. TLN. TCP IP, listen sockets with numbers on the ports and hosts. Okay, so yeah, I see now the problem my application is just not running because on the previous video I shut down PM2 and I did not restart it. Okay, now I see the problem and you instantly see what will happen if your Node.js app goes down. Here's the error page that Nginx will use instead. So now what I'll do, sudo su yuri, become yuri. Okay, now I'm, I'm myself. cd to my home folder and here's my easy IO app. Let's see PM2 status. If it's up and running, okay, my application has stopped. So I see now the root cause. See how easy it was with the help of netstat and a little bit of command line magic. So PM2, start all, and my application has started. Okay, so now let's see if that helps, if this big red warning sign will go away. And EasyIO is working and our Node.js is showing on port 80 and everything looks beautiful. Right, so we achieved this. Node.js is answering on port 80. However, there is one thing that will not be still quite right. If we go to developer console and we go here, you will see this red sign right over here. WebSocket connection failed. 
error during WebSocket handshake. And if you go to network, you will see that your beautiful socket IO that is supposed to work with uh, WebSockets, if they are available, they are sending, it is sending loads of XHR requests. Here they are, let me show them to you. Yep, here's the bunch of GET and POST requests that uh, Socket.io is using to connect to the server. That basically means that somehow we managed to break WebSocket connections. And that's exactly what happened. The thing is that in order to proxy WebSocket connections, we'll have to do a little bit more configuration in, on the Nginx side. And I'll show how to do that on the upcoming video. So I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much and see you in the upcoming videos. Bye.